Hello, this is Pride Soccer. Hello? Can you hear us? I muted them so they can't talk. Oh. This is Pride Soccer. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. We're going to auto mute everybody for the time being and we'll be right on in a minute. Good morning, everybody. It is now 11.30 or maybe 11.31, depending on which watch you're looking at. Uh, thank you for uh, coming into our webinar. Uh, we did decide at the AGM, well, I decided, I guess, at the AGM that we wanted to start these webinars just to keep everybody informed, not only of what's going on in our state, but also what's going on nationally, because there's a lot of changes going on constantly with U.S. soccer, with U.S. Youth Soccer. In fact, we've had several phone calls just recently. I uh, spend a lot of time, it seems like, on conference calls. So we want to be able to use this time and share some things. Uh, I have with me Esti Baharmas, who will be talking regarding some of the referee stuff and what's going on in that department. And also, uh, Lisa is here, will be taking some notes and can answer some questions if need be. And Jimmy, who's here on the technical side of things, I'm going to have Jimmy explain how we're all set up, uh, ready to move forward. All right, so everyone is muted to reduce background noise. Uh, we ask that you, if you have a question, that you type it in the chat on the right-hand side of your screen. To access the chat, click on the message bubble. Um, if we're unable to address your question during today's presentation, we'll get to you via email in the coming days uh, following the presentation. Um, otherwise, we're just going to have everybody muted just to reduce background noise. That way, everybody can hear Nate, and uh, we're all set to go. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, so just to start off with, as you can uh, see on the screen here, uh, just some update on the league information. Uh, our, our LOC put together some task force uh, uh, groups to discuss our uh, Champions League and our Centennial League. And as you can see here, it's going to be very important that uh, you're going to receive a survey that will be coming in the next week or so. And we really want you to get with your DOCs and with yourselves and be able to answer this so we can get some good feedback uh, so we can move forward with some changes to the Champions League. So please look for that uh, survey in the next week or so. Uh, the, the task force that met on the Centennial League uh, had decided that everything was going fine. There will be no changes to the structure at this time. Um, if anybody has uh, suggestions or recommendations, uh, it can go directly to Katie Schaefer, who gets it to the LOC at this time. Update on our adult soccer. We had our second annual adult state cup. It just finished this past Sunday. It was a terrific game between the Aztecs FC over, and they won over the GAM United. Uh, the game went into overtime and then eventually into kicks, and it took the eighth kicker to decide the game. We had that event at DU. We want to thank uh, those that from Denver University helped us uh, get on their campus, and they would play at such a nice stadium. We went from two teams to eight teams, and we're hoping that next year we'll be up to about 16 teams uh, in that adult, uh, in that adult state cup. Moving on to, uh, risk management items. Uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, this was sent out by U.S. Soccer, <clears throat> protecting the young victims from sexual abuse and safe sport authorization act of 17. It finally got, uh, 
voted in as of February 14, 2018. If you click on that link, <clears throat> you'll be able to get more information. Uh, there's also a link with a letter from Dan Flynn, uh, the General Secretary of U.S. Soccer. It talks a little bit about that. <clears throat> we won't go through all that because as you can see, you can click on those to get more information. Some of the things that uh, we do encourage you to get out of this is uh, with the bill, this does uh, make amendments to the Victims of Child Abuse Act of 90, and it does extend uh, you to be able to report uh, suspected child abuse. And this includes, it used to be just a certain people. Let's go ahead and click on the one with the one page. As you can see here, it used to be, uh, when this cup pops up on the screen, it used to be limited just to a certain a certain uh, a pool of people on the reporting. And now this, this goes, this is gonna be very important because this will go uh, as an enactment for your coaches, your administrators, any of your employees that suspect that child abuse need to report this. Uh, to the proper authorities, and you can see from here uh, what that includes. And it'll also, and it, it's also not just a physical or mental injury, but it's sexual abuse or exploitation or neglect or treatment of a child. And in most cases, this will go all the way to the fact that if parents wanted to and you have a yell and scream and coach on the sideline, that could be considered verbal abuse to a child, and that is something that will have to be taken into account that could be turned into authority. So it's gonna be an educational piece that we're gonna to need to be able to pass on to, to all of our employees and anybody that works with the youth directly. As you can see, there is a penalty, uh, we'll go back to the other, there is a penalty for those that uh, don't report anything uh, the criminal penalties, including fines and up to one year in jail. So we do have, we do, we are required by law now to make sure that we do this. Um, if there was a question asked, Jeff, Jeff Rebo, our president, and I went to the U.S. soccer meetings just recently, Jeff did ask the question that <clears throat> if a, if a child shows up and there's bruises and everything, are we still liable at this point? And the, and the answer is yes. Anytime we should suspect any type of abuse of any of our children within our clubs or, or any, any suspect, suspected abuse, we need to report it to the proper authorities. For those that we do, there is a, there is a clause that, uh, as you'll read, that uh, you are covered. Um, for those that do, uh, it's a good Samaritan type clause that if, if you report it and then they find nothing to be there, you are still covered under that, uh, under that clause. And we'll be sending out more information and what, uh, what we will require and what the clause will be required to do. Moving on to the background checks, uh, the only thing I want to say regarding this is You'll be receiving more information. The board has approved that all background checks moving forward will be done by the state. Uh, at this point in time, as you can see with the background checks and the concussion protocol, we want to work with God Soccer so that everything's done. As people register, we can get all that, uh, we can get all that information uh, put into one system and make it easier for the co make it easier for coaches and administrators that'll be on the on the rosters. Coaching department, as you can see, we have, uh, we're gonna click on this overview. It's just information for you to understand that they've changed the, the pathway. Give us one second here. Hold on, we're getting there.
technology. Of course, now it is not coming up. I wanted to show you the grassroots uh, pathway now as far as the educational pieces. I'll begin to talk about this as it pops up now. This picture will show you right here the new coach and licensing pathway. Uh, coaches can now essentially take uh, 4v4, 7v7 modules, whatever is equates to whatever they're working with. The 4v4 is now online. Uh, there will be more information coming out with the rest of it. And also, uh, there will be, in order, if you scroll down just a little bit more, it talks about how to advance in the coaching pathway. And obviously, folks will need to take two in-person courses, one of which has to be the 11v11. And then uh, the online courses across any of the four levels, uh, any of those four, seven, 9v9, or 11v11 in order to move forward. Scroll back up. As you can see on this part here, then for them to advance into the D, they will need to do that. And now this is the new pathway in which, so the F and the E are gone. This is replacing it, moving forward for those that want to move forward uh, with their licensing. We are encouraging all of the clubs as much as possible to get their, get their uh, new coaches into these modules. It will help. And any more information, you can direct your questions either to Mike Freitag or Bill Stare, who is our grassroots director, on any further education or anything else we can do for you in that area. Moving on. Uh, oh, the last piece, sorry, the last piece down there. We do have the ODP tryouts for this next year set. Uh, you, all you have to do is click on that. It'll give you an overview and the dates. Uh, and what all that will include moving forward. Uh, moving on to our referee department, some information there. We want to talk a little bit about the referee abuse, and I have Essie here to discuss that. The only thing I want to remind people about, and we do have a rule and policy regarding this, <clears throat> dogs on the sideline. We had two incidents this last week where uh, the linesman, uh, and some of what one was a minor were bitten by the dog uh, because they got allowed the dog to get too close. It is our policy that dogs are not allowed on the sideline of games at any time for the safety of our referees. So please work with your folks and your coaches to make sure that we are not, if, you're, if your complex allows dogs, please have them move further back away so there's no chance of them jumping up at a linesman and inviting. So I will now turn this over to Essie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to first uh, start with some uh, positive news that you know we are working hard to cover all your games. We have over 2,200 referees registered for 2018, and we're working hard to uh, also improve the quality of refereeing. Uh, day in and day out through having mentors on the matches, having feedback for the referees, and making sure that the games are done in a, in a uh, correct way. Having said that, we lose 50% of our referees every year, and abuse is the number one reason that they cite for not wanting to come back. And just for, as an example, this past weekend, we had a young referee, 14 years old uh, girl, who was doing a U10 match, and she was abused in this game. Parents saying that I got one thing for you and showing fist toward her, that, that they're gonna beat her up. Another young referee, 16 year old in a U10 girls in a seven V seven match, parents arguing about throw in, about the build up line. One parent saying, I'm coming for you after the game. And when the kid says, if you do, I'm going to call the police. The response is not if I get to you first. And then all sorts of, uh, Fall and abusive language towards uh, towards the referee. The positive side, the other coach, which in this case happens to be the Colorado Rapids coach, came to the support of this referee and provided support and protection for him to 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 go to the car and uh, be able to uh, leave the field in a in a, at least a uh, safe way. Um, it's 
it's not all negative. I have to give a shout out to the Pride Soccer. Uh, what they do is unbelievable. The head coach, Troy Ellis, uh, who had a young, young referee uh, on the match, talked to her and said he appreciated her being out there, that he would not argue calls that she made and ask her to have confidence in her calls. And he did what he said he would do throughout the match and provided support. Uh, this, this is the 20-80 situation. We have about 20% of the people who are causing 80% of our pr problems. And we need your help. We need your uh, uh, no-nonsense, almost zero-tolerance approach to this uh, situation where the referees that we bring in, we're working hard with them, and we cannot have them uh, be abused in this shape or manner. So anything we can get done, and again, like I said, the, uh, the uh, Pride Soccer is a good example of how, how they have approached this. It's a community approach to make sure that the referees are protected and we don't lose uh, these referees uh, year, year in and year out. So with that, uh, I would pass it back on to Nate. Thank you, Essie. Um, this is really something that I give a lot of credit to Essie, Neil Fawcett, uh, and the rest of our referee people that are out there uh, working so hard to get more referees out there. We need the club's help in passing more educational information down so that we can eliminate as much abuse as possible. Uh, these children, you, if you could imagine if that was your child out there being treated like this, no one would want that. And so that we need to work at making sure that uh, you're working with us uh, as much as possible to eliminate that. So let's move on. Um, information regarding our, our state cup and president's cup. Cup numbers continue to grow and we put the numbers, uh, we put the numbers up here just so you could see how many teams uh, and that we were up to for this last year. Uh, one perk that uh, many people didn't know that we wanted to put in here, CSA does pay over 40, 40 k in registration for these teams after they win to attend the Far West Regionals and the Regional President Cup. This year you can see down below that the cost was $1,400 as an entry fee for Far West Regionals and $1,200 per team for Regional President's Cup. So we want to continue to help out as much as we can. We congratulate everybody that's made it to the semis this weekend are the finals out at uh, Aurora Sports Park and so if you would like to go see those games uh, please check our website uh, for the schedule. It is also very important that uh, that you pass on that coaches and administrators need to know and read the state cup and president of cup rules. We've had so many people make uh, uh, some comments and everything that this isn't this and this isn't that but they are in the rules so I have them read them so we don't, there's a lot of times that it's, we're not going to take your money and we're not going to take the protest. Cinco de Mayo, weekend of May 4 through 6. Your registration closes on April 22nd. As you see, we've added a link that you can click on for that tournament. Um, so moving on to some miscellaneous items. Uh, we are working on the Senate House Bill 1303. Uh, we are working to try to get... Uh, once again, this is the second week in a row that we've been moved. It's like a continuance in uh, attorney terms. <laughs> I can't really go into all that, but we are working hard. I want to thank uh, Bill Lindsay, uh, Pete Barrett, and everybody at the Littleton Soccer Club that helped get us moving on this bill, and for Jeff, our president, and also with Candy Brooks, who's working uh, with me and some of the others and given some testimony to try to get this bill passed. We are waiting on a date next week where we will attend and once again try to move in to get this bill passed and moved on to the, to the House for a final vote. Uh, we will continue to update you the more we learn about that, but that would be huge for us as far as the contract labor on our, our coaches and try not to, we were trying to keep it as much as possible for not being labeled as employees and, and having to go into all that benefit and the cost that it would take for clubs to even make that work. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, another thing that we've been working on two years ago, we brought up at the AGM that we were working on finding comprehensive benefit plans for the clubs and their employees 
that would create and make the cost a lot less for health insurance uh, uh, and any 401k type benefits. We found a company and we're working and Neil, Neil, um, Neil Duncan is, is helping us on that aspect and we'll get more information. Uh, we're pretty close to finding an answer on that. Uh, so hopefully by the next time we meet, I'll have more information on it. U.S. Soccer's National Data Center, uh, as you know, it was supposed to be April. Now it's moved to June. Uh, if you click on that link, you can uh, you can get more information. Uh, we would like to remind the clubs uh, that when just reviewing everything for collecting the data elements, because there's a lot of information that we're requiring in order for every player to be registered to get their U.S. Soccer. ID as well as their FIFA ID. Uh, U.S. Soccer ID will keep them on a national level and obviously the FIFA number will keep them international so for those kids that go country to country they'll be able to uh, view where they are and what they are doing. Um, <clears throat> if your club is currently using Got, Got Soccer they have assured us that uh, they're working diligently to make sure that the program would be completed for the June 1st launch. Uh, so we are working with them on all our other aspects as well as this. Uh, if your club is not with God Soccer, you will need to check with your current software provider. Uh, when I was in Kansas City, they did say that some of the providers have not yet uh, integrated into the, the National Data Center. So make sure that your software company is set up to do that so there's no delays when you go to put your uh, uh, player's information in. So U.S. Soccer is launching the bio banding initiative. Click on that, Jimmy. This is something that uh, is just fairly new. Uh, well, it is brand new. So if you read through this, obviously they're talking about uh, putting teams together as far as uh, as far as the, not necessarily based on age, but based on height, weight, and all that, and the, so they're they're doing a uh, pilot program with this uh, through Texas, and obviously this is brand new. I just bring it out for for you for your review. We will be given more information as they pass it on from from their testing and what and what they're doing with that. So if you have questions on that, you can send the questions to me, but we'll work on we'll work on trying to get you more information. And I'm not going to read through that whole thing, but it is quite interesting and it's quite informational for you to do. <clears throat> um, so just to finish up, so in lieu of the May webinar, uh, we would ask that all club executives please plan on joining us for a workshop on Wednesday, May 16th from 9 in 2, and we'll obviously provide lunch for everybody. We have so much information that I've received from U.S. Soccer, uh, from U.S. Youth on several changes that it would take forever to do it on, uh, it would take forever to do it on a webinar such as this. So I would also like to work, uh, use it as a workshop uh, I'll be giving out, uh, I'll be sending out, Lisa will be sending out a reminder with a, uh, a tentative agenda on topics and for discussion and more information to be passed on. Uh, so what I would like to do is ask you that if you have anything that you would add, like to add to the agenda for the workshop, please send it in uh, to Lisa so that she can get it down and, and we can move forward with that. Uh, we we will have more information on all three aspects, on the adults, the youth, and the referees, all combined so you can pass it on to your clubs. <clears throat> One thing I, I know that we're working on with U.S. soccer constantly is that Colorado, the one thing we have to be proud of is Colorado is the model state for U.S. soccer. We are the only state to incorporate all three aspects of the youth, the adults, and the referees. And now we also are one of the few that have all the leagues still under our umbrella that we're working with. We have a good relationship with all our DA and ECNL clubs, and we want to continue that. But we also want to continue the fact that 
as we provide this, as the model state moving forward, that we can make changes that U.S. Soccer will work with us on uh, and give us more benefits in the long run. So we're hoping that you can join us. Please send me any of the information that uh, you would like to add to the agenda uh, for that meeting. Uh, it will, we'll use the first part as more informational, the second part more as a workshop. At this point in time, I'm going to pause and uh, put, a, put everybody on hold and wait for a few minutes to see if anybody has any questions. And then if not, we'll wrap up our first webinar of this year. So one question was asked, if you haven't got this uh, PDF uh, before in an email and you need it resent to you, uh, please email Lisa and she'll be glad to resend it to you. We want you to be able to click on all, all of the links, sorry, all the links so that you can get all the information. Uh, this one has quite a few links with the information that you'll be needing. Are there any more questions or anything that anybody wants to share? At this point in time, doesn't seem like there'll be any questions. If there are, please email us here at CSA. Uh, Lisa can get it to the appropriate people if you're unsure who it is. It's L Stively at coloradosoccer.org. She's so happy that I give that out all the time. <laughs> Next I'll give out her mobile number. No, I'm just joking. Um, so if you have any other information, please send it. But thank you for joining us at this time. And at this time, we'll end the webinar. Thank you.